uh, back by popular demand, the basics of terrestrial 3D laser scanning with recap. Now, this is actually a webinar that um, I, uh, I did earlier uh, in the year. Uh, we've got a lot of really good feedback for that. So I decided to, to mostly uh, to redo this again, but I have enhanced it. So as Eric alluded to in a minute, um, we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, reality data capture, which goes beyond just terrestrial 3D. Uh, and into you know some of the photogrammetry or photo based reconstruction methods that we uh, provide here uh, with, uh, within Autodesk. Um, so uh, so let me jump right in. Um, for uh, for those of you and I, again this 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 webinar is mainly geared toward people who are are new or or, or looking for ways of uh, talking to their customers, explaining them in sort of a, just a very basic level what what is reality capture. Um, and, and what we like to say is uh, the, the digitization of the 3D world. Now you can digitize in a lot of ways, um, but you know reality capture, reality data is specific to 3D. Um, and so, uh, and so here's what it's about. This is uh, courtesy of NASA. Um, they uh, have a sort of wind tunnel that they uh, they want to work with. They want to do some uh, some retrofit. Um, but uh, you know, getting in and interacting with the wind tunnels directly is a little challenging, especially if a lot of people are touching it. So uh, they bring this piece of equipment in. This is a terrestrial laser scanner. They set it up and they get this. This is a digital representation of of the uh, the wind tunnel. And what's really great about this type of representation is that it allows you to to take the physical world um, and you bring it into uh, the digital world. So that it is now accessible not just from at, at the site, but actually from your laptop. Um, and you can do things with it that you couldn't do otherwise. So this this you know wind tunnel that you saw um, uh, uh, this gentleman standing in, you can now treat like an object. Uh, you can do cross sections, you can do measurements, you can visualize it in ways that you couldn't visualize it before. Um, but you can do entire complexes, so you can see how things are connected. You see how uh, roofs and interiors are, uh, you know, aligned with one another relative to even how underground infrastructure is set up. And it's all as built, you know, or as exists condition. Um, what are people doing with this data? Um, the, the, the sky's a little bit the limit uh, in terms of the possibilities of the data. Uh, by and large, what we uh, you know we see and what we see customers see using the data for uh, are, are some very basic things. Um, one is you know you don't have an as built or maybe a, a 2D record or even a 3D record you know of a building of a facility. Uh, so number one question is can I take this data and make a floor plan? You absolutely can. Uh, it's one of the highest use cases for the data. Uh, second is just to do some basic uh, checks. Um, and you know, for those of you who are doing anything uh, in a building or factory, especially around renovation or retrofit, going back and taking a measurement is a large part of what what occurs. So here you've got at the touch of a button or a few button mouse, mouse focus to say the ability to take take some some you know quick measurement. Uh, you can also, with the help of uh, the Hero out of this Hero product, you can actually lay out and start to design directly from this data. So you can see what you know a new design looks at looks like, or how it attaches or works through an environment. Uh, keep this thing, um, and uh, and look at look at how it relates to what's actually there. Um, the other is um, how uh, you know how many assets, how many objects are in your facility. You can count them. You can see how they're spaced apart without physically having to be there. And what gets really interesting is taking digital um, artifacts, things you've captured from the field, and turning them into actual objects. And so you can do things like virtually move around large pieces of equipment um, or large artifacts that would be difficult to rearrange, but do them digitally and sort of get a sense of how things line up way before anything's actually touched. Um, and so all of this matters uh, in, in the grand scheme of things because there's a lot of benefits, especially in a, in a renovation or a retrofit project, 
One is that, in the by and large, is it minimizes rework. Um, in, in cases where you're installing new pieces of equipment, um, you know, getting uh, you know what's actually there versus what you know what's designed is key, and so it really reduces the amount of mistakes you're going to make. It keeps popping up. Um, so uh, the second is it reduces waste. Um, you know, you're not going to uh, build as much, uh, you're not going to cut as much away uh, because you have reality that you're working with. And it, uh, it overall shrinks the project completion time. Now, some, some argue with this a little bit because it does add a little bit of upfront uh, cost associated to doing the data capture. But we, what we've seen time and time again with projects that employ this uh, type of uh, techniques is that it does compress it because of the reduced work and, and reduced waste. It also is really good for project estimation, knowing you know how to budget projects. And and by and large, it's just the best way to document a space. Um, you can take photographs, you can take measurements, you can put this in you know a, a CAD layout, but you'll you'll never get as good of a data model that you will than from a a reality capture standpoint. So a large part of this talk is going to be in the technology, how you what what's available and how you know what tools you know we provide to allow you to digitize. And uh, and today there's there's really two primary technologies. One is a camera, uh, which most of us uh, have access to, and the other is a terrestrial uh, laser scanner or terrestrial lidar. Um, which most of us may or may not have access to. And I'll describe to you the difference between these two and some of the advantages and disadvantages. So let's start with the camera. Um, with the camera, we're going to talk about Recap360, our web services. You access it through the browser. Um, and in a minute, when we talk about laser scanning, we'll talk a little bit about Recap and Recap Pro. So if you go to recap360.autodesk.com, uh, you'll get, uh, uh, and you have an account, you'll get to log in and you'll get to see uh, a, a page similar to this. As you see, I've got a lot of projects up there. From this, uh, from this site, you can do two things. Uh, one is you can create a 3D um, object from nothing but photographs. And the second thing you can do is you can visualize scans online. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about the first one since we'll talk about the second as we get into laser scanning. Um, but uh, in principle, uh, you know, to, to make 3D from, uh, from images, you have to have a set of images that overlap. And behind the scenes, what happens essentially is that the camera, or actually the algorithms are looking for um, uh, objects or, or um, overlap, correspondence between two sets of images. And from that, knowing a little bit or be able to, or calculating, I should say, a little bit from the, with the camera, uh, we're able to derive geometry. Now, if you want to collect, uh, you know, 360 around an object, then what you have to do is take several photographs uh, with lots of really good overlap between the different images uh, around an object. You submit these uh, to uh, Recap 360, uh, and then uh, ultimately you get uh, a 3D model like you see here. Now, it's important to note, uh, especially those who are unaware, um, that this type of process from cameras creates what we call as a mesh. Um, you can visualize a mesh as a wireframe, so it's essentially a set of points connected uh, by, by vertices or lines. You can apply a surface to this so that you can see um, with the surface you have normals, you can do shading, and then finally you can add texture to it, which gives you that really photorealistic looking 3D object. It's a great technique to, to start off with. It's a great technique for um, for capturing objects. Um, it where it where it starts to have limitations is regards to the the nature of a camera and that's a passive being a passive device. Um, it relies on really good lighting conditions, limited shadows, um, sort of the perfect sort of uh, scenario for for taking really good uh, pictures, which may or may not always be the case. And so, uh, in those situations, we start to look at laser scans. Uh, now, laser scans are more high, higher end in terms of uh, cost and, and equipment, but you get a, a very consistent, very highly accurate 3D representation of your world. 
in the world of 3D laser scan, you have different flavors. So you have your terrestrial laser scan, which you see here on the left. Um, you have your more what they call metrology or benchtop scanners, which are more about capturing uh, objects for uh, uh, for, for uh, retro, or I should say, um, reverse engineering. And then you have your very large scale objects um, or large scale scanning projects, which is more your airborne or mobile scanning equipment. This is for terrain and infrastructure. Um, RECAP, although we, we have the ability to handle all of these different uh, flavors of laser scanning, where, where RECAP and RECAP Pro especially specializes in is in this terrestrial. So um, definitely uh, our strong suit is in this uh, sort of building and in, in sort of uh, uh, bridge size objects for scanning. Um, so let's talk a little bit about um, just high level principles of how the laser scan works. Um, so uh, first off, you have a laser and a camera uh, inside you know, an optical casing uh, in the unit. Um, the, the laser in particular emits a beam of light um, that reflects off an object and comes back. Um, now, uh, whether, you know, so there's varying technology. Some measure the amount of time it actually takes from, a, from the beam of light to emit and come back. Some measure a, a phase shift between the two, um, the light source. Um, but either way, you can compute a measurement from that. By then taking, it has a mirror that spins, and by this mirror spinning, you, you cut a line, uh, like a, a you know, 360-degree sort of line through the environment of measurement. And then by having a base that rotates, you get a, a hemisphere, if you will, of data. Um, now, unlike the um, photo uh, method of construction, uh, laser scans um, do not produce a mesh natively. They produce uh, a series of dots or points call a point cloud. Um, with, the, with the camera uh, that you know, many of these are now have embedded inside of them, you can actually colorize. So from a distance, it does look like a, a surface. However, zooming into one of these things, uh, you'll see that it is a collection of dots, individual measurements or samplings of, of, a, of the surface geometry in your environment. Um, and so this, again, coming back to it, uh, is sort of the heart of what, uh, what the RECAP product line uh, provides. And that's uh, software and services to create, manage, and share uh, you know, these types of data sets. Um, so uh, what does RECAP do? So one, it allows you to visualize point clouds. As you see here, this is a point uh, cloud of a, of a dinosaur exhibit here. Uh, I'm in Pittsburgh. This is the Pittsburgh uh, Carnegie uh, Museum of Natural History. Um, it allows you to edit points. So if I want to select a dinosaur and just have it represented, I can do that. Uh, I can take measurements and uh, accuracy, high, high quality, high accurate uh, measurements from the point data. Uh, I, can, I can actually tag and link so I can make markups of objects and have those markups shared inside the project, so when I share that with somebody else, they can see the things I've, I've made notes of. Um, and I can also link these to uh, external uh, data sources like websites. Um, I can then publish and share, uh, collaborate. So as I mentioned earlier, Recap 360 also allows sort of the uh, sharing of views of this data. So you can, uh, for, you can provide this links uh, of this data to people who do not necessarily have the desktop product you just want to look at it via the browser. Uh, and then um, more importantly, what, what Recap is really uh, targeted around is preparing this data for use in the Autodesk portfolio. So using it for uh, design and uh, preparation uh, or sort of in, in context uh, uh, modeling of the world. Uh, you'll hear me mention that uh, there, there's Autodesk, there's also Recap Pro. Uh, Pro isn't a separate product. It's actually an, a feature inside of Recap that um, is, is activated when you purchase a license. Um, Pro is actually designed to be an in-field uh, optimization or workflow assistance tool. Um, and so what Pro does is this. So if I want to scan uh, a building, right, um, 
that if I if I drop in the scanner and it spins around and does its 360 degree collection, gives me that sphere data, that's great. I see everything from the point of view of the laser scanner. However, you can see um, that there are columns and there are sides of columns that I will not be able to see. And I'll, of course, I want to capture those. So I will have to move the scanner around in order to do that. Uh, and, and I'd repeat this process until the bulk of or the entire environment and all the surfaces are collected. Now, I now deal with the problem of taking these individual laser scans and combining them into one, uh, one representation, one data model. Historically, this has been done with targets. You may have caught these before, but I've kind of circled to highlight these things. Um, these are sort of known reference points in the scan that can be used to bring these individual scans together. Now, as you can see, and just for what's visible in this one shot, there are a lot of targets. And these are things that you have to uh, install, put up prior to, and manage throughout the duration of a capture project. Um, now, for any of those who, who've had to do uh, any sort of picking up flyers or putting up uh, objects on walls, you can know that this, this does take a bulk of time. Uh, in addition to having to lug these things around. So the advantage of Recap Pro is that we allow you to do this registration without the use of targets. It uh, doesn't mean you, you, you don't use targets for verification. Um, uh, however, um, we can, by uh, clicking on a few points in the environment, giving us some, some hints and reference, you can actually uh, use natural feature in the environment to, to bring these scans together. Uh, now, in a, in a separate webinar that may have been recorded, or we'll probably do again talking about the work with the Recap Pro, which I won't get in here. But uh, you can uh, you can definitely uh, collect uh, and register data sets a lot faster than you can uh, with the target-based workflow. Uh, so, so by and large, how how it all works um, from a laser scan, uh, you bring in these raw scans right out of the scanner. Uh, into Recap or Recap Pro to do the registration, and from there you have the ability to publish them to uh, Recap 360, where you can share and visualize those data sets, or publish them into, uh, or bring them into a Hero product. Now I'll note that um, the camera-based workflow, which we talked about at the beginning of the webinar, uh, which creates the mesh, uh, we also have the ability to turn that mesh into a point cloud. So if you do um, create something via a camera workflow, you can follow the same process to use that data in a Hero product. Um, just as a point of reference, um, you saw images from a NASA. That was actually part of a project in which they were renovating um, a hypersonic uh, chamber, which is uh, we'll term for wind tunnel. Uh, in which they want to add and change the space for the purpose of um, getting new labs, new equipment in this area. Uh, they wanted to scan the, the entire complex, and originally they had budgeted via this workflow of targeting uh, to take about 16 weeks. With the use of recap and uh, you know having to uh, not set up targets, the project time was actually uh, completed in four weeks. So I think it was a little under four weeks which is a pretty significant time saving. Uh, just to give you a sense of what you know, some of the data looks like versus um, what we could see in the photograph. So on the left, you see this is a 3D point cloud. And on the right, this is a photograph in which the, the point cloud was manipulated to be pretty much in the same uh, vicinity of the image. Uh, again, what's great about the, the, the point cloud, and not only does it look uh, photorealistic, but you can actually uh, you can move around. So if I wanted to see what's behind a canister or uh, you know a particular pump, I can actually move in the point cloud, whereas I'm stuck with the 2D image. In addition to taking measurements and doing actual data extractions. Now what you'll find is uh, beyond this, what is largely done with uh, the Hero product, um, they take the point cloud and they trace it. So what you see here is Sort of a hybrid um, showing a, a 3D model that's being constructed um, from a, a point cloud. Now this is one uh, of, of many uses and you know within Autodesk 
uh, we're, we're working to um, really do a lot more with the point cloud. So very exciting time. Uh, you know, look forward to the next six to 12 months with some really interesting things we'll be releasing with regards to working smarter, uh, better and smarter with point cloud. Um, and uh, for those of you interested in learning more, um, we have, uh, we I call it pretty recent, but launched a, a, a new website not too long ago, uh, recap.autodesk.com. Uh, great source of information, um, great examples of, of how to use reality data, and we're constantly updating that site, so good place to go. Another great place to go is recapsupport.typehead.com. Uh, we have a blog. We also provide a lot of um, FAQ, a lot of information from, from customers go there. So great place to find out what's going on in this world and, and uh, what you can do with the data. Um, we also have a reality computing blog, um, which is uh, realitycomputing.com. Um, and uh, you, from there, you can, you can see what webinars are coming up. But uh, that's a, this is a great site to just see what's happening in the world of not only 3D scanning and uh, 3D reconstruction of photos, but the world of 3D printing and you know some really interesting things that are happening in the world with regards to how this data is being used. So really, really uh, advocate you go and, and check out one of those sites. Um, to, to end with it, I'll, I'll show you a video here of um, you know some interesting things that are being done with um, our photo reconstruction. Uh, this is a video uh, for those of you who are on a slower connection and don't get it. You can go to YouTube and check this out. Um, but it's uh, what, we're, what, what we're very interested in doing is working with drones. So you see here, this is a, a hobbyist drone, uh, or I should say quadcopter, uh, in which there is a GoPro Hero 3 uh, attached to the bottom of it. And by flying uh, the drone around an object, um, or in this case, the object is something the size of a, of a building, um, and uploading those photos, you can get a, a really, really good 3D representation of uh, of the uh, of the site of the building. Now, as I mentioned before, uh, what you're seeing here is the, um, the the 3D reconstruction. And mesh, of course, was created, but uh, the point cloud was derived. So in this example, what we're seeing a uh, point cloud that was created from photos. And uh, you know, from here, uh, you can you can do all the things you can with uh, terrestrial laser scanner data, any point cloud data, and that is take measurements, do cross sections, do visualizations that you couldn't do otherwise, uh, and then more importantly, bring it into uh, a Hero product for uh, design, which is which is what you're about to see here. Um, and so uh, I'll let the video play on. Um, as soon as it's done, I'll uh, bring up a site, uh, our final page, which has all of these links, as well as links to um, our, our uh, Twitter feeds and other social media um, connections. But uh, I think, given the time, I, uh, I'll be happy to take a few questions. So Eric, if you will. All right. Yeah. Uh, so as Aaron said, you know, we'll take a few questions. Um, you know, if you guys have questions, please enter them in the question box. Uh, you know, we'll try to get to everybody. Uh, also, if I might, uh, we do have a couple of uh, survey questions we'd like to ask just to just to get an idea of what what you guys are doing, what your experience is with, uh, you know, with laser scanning, with photogrammetry, just to help us kind of tailor things uh, to be more relevant to our audience. So uh, I'll ask those in a moment once this uh, video finishes. We're all best done here. Yeah. Okay. He's <laughs> just showing us the final design. You got to see this. I, uh, to me, so. Every time I see it, I'm still in awe. It's pretty cool. So, uh, so anyway, there's the links to the uh, some of the blogs and Twitter feeds. Um, so, you want me to? Are you going to take it back over, Eric? Yeah. So we'll just leave this slide up. But uh, so I do have a few questions here for you. Um, okay. First off, let's see. Uh, so Robert asks. We're scanning a dark 600-foot tunnel. 
with a ferro focus? Uh, how many scans do you recommend, and what's the best way to link them together? Oh, okay. <laughs> tough that's questions that's right off the bat. One. I know that's a hard one. That's a good one. Um, I actually, uh, oddly enough, have quite a bit of experience with regards to scanning underground tunnels. Um, so uh, a few things: uh, the amount of scans that you need, it it, it all depends. Um, recap um, works off of features. So you need uh, lots of good features and X, Y, and Z to lock scans in together. Um, you can imagine the worst case is you're all in the middle of an open parking lot uh, and you, you want to put scans together and there's just nothing in. You got Z, but you don't have X and Y. So uh, with coming back to a tunnel, what typically happens, especially the tunnel has nice and with walls, you get uh, you get you get X and you get sort of along the tunnel, but then you don't get a good, say, for argument's sake, Y component that allows you to uh, resolve how scans are coming together, uh, you know, sort of in uh, in the direction of the tunnel. Um, so uh, you uh, your scans will be based off of how many features allow you to lock it in and how much occlusion there is. So if you can see a, a long distance and there's ample of feature, you can take uh, fewer scans. But if, if your visibility is pretty short or if there's a lot of bends in the tunnel, you'll need to increase the number of scans you take um, to make sure that you get uh, enough feature, enough overlap to bring the scans together. Uh, I know that, that seemed like a sort of a high level answer to, to such a good question. Uh, and if you like, um, you reach out uh, to me via the recap community um, and uh, maybe follow up and provide you some maybe more details there. All right. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, let's see. Let's go to a photo question now. Uh, how many, let's see. Oh, uh, do the pictures need to be uploaded in a sequence to get a good result? Or can we just upload, you know, uh, at random, basically? Well, it's a, so that's a, I think that's a trick question. <laughs> uh, so you can upload in any, uh, any sequence you choose. However, as I pointed out, the actual images themselves have to have overlap. Uh, now, it helps that... Um, I think from an algorithm standpoint that the files are named sort of in an in, in order of overlap. Uh, but as long as you've got a set of images that, um, you know, have, uh, you know, clearly, you know, overlapping visual features that go between the scans, it really doesn't matter the sequence in which you actually physically upload them to the site. Uh, it's again, it's it's really about the content of the images, not necessarily the the uh, the naming or number of images. All right, I uh, I think we have time for maybe one more. Um, just so you guys know, if if we don't get to your question, we'll we'll answer them later as well. And also, as Aaron said, you can always email us at recap.community at autodesk.com. You know, we'll be happy to field your questions. Um, for the last question, let's see. Uh, Scott asks, can recap join both mesh data created from photogrammetry and data collected from a scanner to create a hybrid point cloud? Oh, I love that question. Um, so uh, the answer is yes. Although I would say it's it's not as um, it's not as elegant as we uh, we're planning to make it in the future. Um, you the steps to combine these is, uh, requires essentially um, taking a mesh uh, project or a mesh converting it to uh, a point cloud, which uh, you can you can do through Recap 360. Uh, and then separately having uh, a, a project uh, where the um, uh, point cloud, if you've got to register anything from scans, that's all done independently. Um, you you then have to go in and uh, make sure that the both data sets, um, uh, the coordinates of those have been uh, positioned into um, a, uh, the same coordinate frame where they have to line up. Uh, you can do this 
either you know one from the point cloud by adding uh, survey points or, or, or you know localizing it in that manner, and then by bringing the two projects together, um, you uh, you can overlay one uh, one point cloud uh, on top of the other. I'll say that um, we do have some releases uh, coming up in the near future, which I think makes this workflow a little bit easier. Um, but it's certainly something you can do today. Uh, if uh, if you've really got a really interesting project to work on. All right. And as I mentioned, I'm just going to ask two quick survey questions. You'll see a, uh, a poll pop up on your screen. You know, it would be great if you guys could take a few seconds to answer these for us. It'll help, you know, like I said, give, uh, give us an idea of what we're looking with, or looking at, rather. Just give it a few seconds for people to get their votes in. All right. And one more question. Just uh, give us an idea of you know which uh, which prod products you guys are using um, you know as we as we develop uh, further webinars it's always useful to know what uh, what people care about so all right. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. As I said, uh, feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions. Recap.community at autodesk.com. You know, follow us on Twitter, Google Plus. Check out the YouTube page. Uh, check out the blog. You know, we've got lots of great stuff out there. We'd like to hear from you about what you're doing. So, feel free to drop us an email. Thank you, Aaron, for the presentation, and thanks everybody for joining us. We'll have the next webinar on, let's see, it's September the 16th. It's a Tuesday, uh, about two weeks from now. Uh, so everybody, feel free to uh, join us again. Thanks for joining.